cover, but they never do it. They can get the same pay doing some other police job without the danger and the sacrifices of working undercover. When I joined, just out of the Marine Corps, spit and polish, when I joined the Marine Corps, I mean, when I joined the police department, I always had short hair. Uh, and then you go from that to uh, uh, what we like to call a dirt bag, uh, long hair, beard, really was, uh, dirty clothes, uh, sloppy. Uh, naturally, your wife uh, is not, that's not the same man she married. My wife was uh, strictly against it from the get-go. Uh, I don't know if she had any foresight or not, but she just didn't, she said, I don't, I don't like it, but uh, naturally you're going to do what you want to do anyway. Somewhere during the 14 years of undercover work, their marriage began to unravel. Corona found that even his relationship with other officers changed. Undercover, he couldn't openly associate with them. He couldn't be part of the ball team. He couldn't go bowling with them. In fact, anyone outside their narcotics division was just another relationship that fell by the wayside. Even when he received special citations and awards, he couldn't share the pride and joy with other officers. It was a closed ceremony with a little fanfare. All of this secrecy for his protection. But Corona says not all police officers understood his distance, much less his appearance. I think some police officers, not only in St. Louis, but police officers throughout the United States, uh, don't like the image of the narcotics division, especially the undercovers. Truth is, some of them uh, have almost slandered you and libeled you over the years, haven't they? This flight said that you've got to be dirty. You couldn't have stayed under that long. That you, you've, well, been heard, uh, a, you've been as bad as some of the people you've been arresting, they say. Well, some, you know, sly remarks, you know. I'm sure it goes through their mind. You try, you, you, I try to look at it from their point of view. Uh, I know that on occasions that we've, uh, I've acted a little crazy. Uh, I know there are officers watching, but uh, hey, you can't uh, stop acting what you're supposed to be on the street uh, just because the police officer might be watching you. I mean, I'm not talking about illegal things, but I'm talking about craziness. Sometimes an undercover police officer isn't known to all members of the police department. And sometimes that can lead to some exciting situations. Now, that's what happened to John Corona at this car wash. A police officer mistakenly identified Corona as Jack Lee Lindsay, a man wanted for the murder of a Jefferson County deputy. Certain that he had a cop killer on his hands, the police officer radioed for more help. It's humorous now. Uh -huh. At the time? At the time, it wasn't too humorous. Once you feel that, uh, that pistol in the back of your neck or, and that pistol in, in your kidney, it's not humorous at all. And I was immediately handcuffed. And uh, hair pulled back, and naturally. Uh, Lindsay was considered at the time armed and dangerous. And uh, it read the riot act. They treated you pretty rough, huh? Sure. And uh, rightfully so. They should take control of the scene if they have an arrest of a, of, a, of a wanted felon. I couldn't understand why I was being arrested, first of all. Uh, but then I was told right up front, you're Jack Lindsay. And uh, I said, no, I'm not. But uh, being a police officer, I know that you, uh, you don't want to say that much. That particular time is a bad time to start yelling. Tomorrow night, you'll see how Officer Corona helped stop a bank robbery that would 